So our last speaker today is Natalie Privet, who is a systems designer at the Design Institute for Health. Um, and she's working on a project to map the landscape of health design to really empower all participants to build connections and collaborate better for the well-being of all. Um, and when we think about this in the context of health literacy, you know, one thing that can hold us back is operating in silos and not knowing um, where we sit in the context of the other organizations and companies and products and all of these things. So um, Natalie's going to talk a little bit about how we can better see this system and catalyze collaboration. There we go. All right. um, excellent. Well, thank you so much. As Amy mentioned, my name is Natalie Prevet, and I'm a systems designer at the Design Institute for Health, which is um, located at the University of Texas in Austin. So I'm coming to you from sunny Austin, Texas. And it's a radical collaboration between the Dell Medical School, which is the first new medical school at an R1 university in a really long time, as well as the College of Fine Arts at the University of Texas. So in addition to being a systems designer, I'm also on faculty at our uh, brand new program that is a Master of Arts in design with a focus on design and health. So helping to um, equip people to um, increase their skills, increase um, their abilities in design and or health and, and really be change makers in this space. So I'm excited to talk about the map we're doing, but before I get too far into it, I wanna tell you a little bit more about um, the Design Institute for Health. As designers, we know that context is really important. And so um, where am I coming from? Um, one, I'm a systems designer. I've dedicated my career to reimagining and redesigning systems of health from global health supply chains and thinking of pharmaceuticals in remote regions of the world to thinking about how do we transform a set of, of primary care assets within a system now to achieve value-based care. Um, and also thinking about things like how might we create a high functioning integrated system for really meeting a person's whole health needs, not just their medical needs, but also their social needs and economic needs. Um, how could we create a system to do that? And so these are the fun problems that I get, that I think about, the challenges that um, get me excited. And right now, um, really right now at the Institute, I'm, I'm really thinking about, um, been thinking about how to equip our students and also um, recently thinking about transitions of care in the hospital and how to create um, a successful transition from a hospitalization to follow-up care that, um, that really um, creates a setting to achieve health. And the Design Institute, as I mentioned, we are embedded within the Dell Medical School and our clinical partner, which is Ascension, um, which you may be familiar with as a very large health system in the country. Um, and we have the privilege of both being able to work from within the system of medical education, of um, a health system, and of clinical environments, but also working beyond them. And Austin, Texas is a very um, unique place. Uh, one of the things that drew me here in terms of um, kind of policies and things that have created um, a, a a county where everyone has access to healthcare and health insurance doesn't need to be a barrier. Um, so we're able to take on a lot of projects that, that help achieve that as well and think of health really broadly, not just health care traditionally or medical care, but thinking about um, what is health, whether that's um, food or housing um, or criminal justice. And so um, what we really seek to do is to transform health. And of course, this certainly shapes what I'm about to um, share with you. So my talk is seeing the systems to catalyze collaboration, the design and health landscape, as Amy mentioned. And what I want to talk to you specifically about with this is I want to talk to you about the landscape of this intersection, the space of design and health. What is this landscape? Um, our nascent effort to really catalyze collaboration both within this space and beyond the space through mapping. And ultimately, I'd like to invite you to co-create with me. So to start, as Amy started our um, this whole session off with, I want to ground us in this idea around health literacy. So personal health literacy, and as Amy mentioned, these um, are quite contemporary in terms of how recently they've been updated, the, the kind of 
modern understandings of health literacy as of last year. Um, so personal health literacy is really thinking about individuals um, and if they're able to navigate, understand, and use information and services to take care of their health. And I think this is probably the more traditional um, way we think about um, health literacy. But I was really excited to see, as a systems and organizations geek, I was very excited to see the definition of health literacy extend further than that um, recently to include organizational health literacy. And Amy mentioned this in the um, beginning of the session, but I, I wanna reiterate um, this idea that organizational health literacy is really um, acknowledging that it's not just about people's ability to have access to information or that information is out there and services are out there. It's about enabling personal health literacy, which is that people can use and access these things. Um, and that actually the responsibility and the ability even to achieve personal health literacy is hugely dependent on organizations, that organizations themselves have a responsibility to address health literacy. And so this is a bit of a mashup, a few of these contemporary definitions that organizational health literacy is an effort to transform care, to make it easier for people to navigate, understand, and use information and services to take care of their health. Now, I know I'm talking to an audience um, familiar with design, and I know that all of the designers in the audience are thinking, this is design, right? These definitions of health literacy just really speak to us um, as designers and in our craft and what we do. So if this is organizational health literacy, how would we define design? There are a lot of many definitions of design. Um, this is one we often turn to in the Institute, a quote by Steve Jobs that design isn't just what it looks or feels like, but it's how it works. And we like this definition a lot because it's simple, but it's powerful and it helps to extend um, the definition in the healthcare realm beyond the aesthetic, but to really think of function and purpose. Um, and so what is the role of design in health? And at the Design Institute of health, for Health, we believe that the design, the role of design in health is to provoke systemic change in health through design. Um, so that coming back and hearkening back to that idea of transforming care that we saw in that definition of organizational health literacy. So to provoke change in care can be a lot of things. It can be a change in perspective to seeing care more systematically or a change in education, which is something we're really seeking to do as we seek to, um, our MA program combines both um, medical students and um, professional students looking to uh, get a degree at the intersection of design and health. And um, it's a really exciting uh, time to be able to kind of push education to say, um, how can we equip the change makers? And um, here it says the malcontents, people who aren't going to be, you know, satisfied with the status quo. How can we remake um, models of care? that challenge our legacy approaches. So I think we could all agree that systemic th change through design is absolutely what is needed to develop health literacy at both the personal and organizational levels. If design is what health needs, then how? How can um, it, design be accessed by organizations and individuals. As you all know, attending this conference, there is a rich landscape developing of, with a range of organizations and individuals that are working at this intersection of health and design. Um, and these organizations it, are an ex part of an exciting movement um, in healthcare and in design. And, um, but, who are these organizations for um, maybe a health system that would love to look to design for maybe an individual that would love to apply their design skills in the health space? Who makes up this landscape of the intersection of health and design? 
how could we access it and find out? So this was kind of the question that led to myself and my colleague, Adam Ziner, thinking, how can we access it? A map. A good a systems designer will most of the time lead you to a map, and I'm no different in that sense. And the vision is essentially a map that contains the organizations that are situated in both design and health. So they have to be at that intersection, um, leveraging the craft of design in the health space. And I'll talk a little bit more about how we think that about that. How did this mapping project came about? I mean, here's a map that I'm proposing that has is putting forward for people in this conference to get pretty meta about what we do. Let's think about ourselves, designers in health, and um, how could we organize ourselves? Who are we? How could we be accessed? Um, and myself and Adam, my colleague, this really came about um, from some conversations that um, we had and, and from two places. One was with the Care Collaboratory, which is um, a creative space seeking to harness curiosity and innovation to transform healthcare. So interdisciplinary space, um, but really seeking to use design thinking, as they say, so people don't hurt so much. Um, and the Care Collaboratory, we were in a meeting with them and they're saying, who, 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 who is design in health? Like, what organizations do you know of? What people do you know of? Who should we connect with? How do we do this? And we thought, wow, it would be really nice to have um, a guide, some sort of space that, that, that um, we were using to um, articulate who we are. Um, and the other one is through our master's program. There are so many people um, within our master's program and beyond who say, wow, working at the intersection of design and health, that is cool. That is something that I would really love to be a part of. Who's working in this space? How could I find out more about it? Where could I read about companies doing this? And then, of course, Adam and I are really passionate about mapping. So um, that gives you a bit of an idea of how this became Adam and I's pet project. Um, but something that we think is really important for the for the for our field. So why do we think it's important to map the design and health space? I propose four main reasons why we should map this space. One is to formalize an advanced practice. And if you read the description of my talk, you saw that I mentioned quality improvement has been is a well-documented discipline. It's progressed to this kind of agreed upon norms and nomenclature. And maybe we don't want exactly that, but design as a discipline, we would love to progress and get the reach that you've seen um, with, for example, quality improvement in the domains of health and well-being. Um, and so how could we formalize our practice and advance it and, and come together? Um, also, bringing cohesion to the space. Um, as I'm pretty sure most people on this conference talk about how we can't work in silos and how healthcare is so, so fraught with um, silos being part of the really critical systems problems. Um, so how can we, as designers in health, um, break our own silos and integrate our different communities of practice and education programs and organizations? Um, and so this map is an effort to visually represent us as a field and our relatedness, um, as well as our distinctions. And lastly, to make accessible that this could be a map and a space that people could come to refer to understand the space to see um, who we are working here. Um, and lastly, to provoke critical conversations that this map can illustrate a landscape of change agent organizations with radical ideas about changing healthcare. Um, and also it can highlight collaborative opportunities for how we can move forward in health and who our allies are in new paths forward for people to get healthy and stay healthy. So then what do we map? For each organization, we decided we wanted to map as a foundation something that captured the centricity of health and work within the field of health for each organization. How central is working in health to that organization, as well as design? How central is 
the discipline and craft of design in the way that organization goes about working in health. And there's also a lot of other information that we think could be really helpful to capture in this map, um, whether for job seekers, whether for um, people seeking consultants or allies. So maybe that would be sector, organizations in academia versus consultancies, um, size, and also locations as to where these organizations work. And I invite you to, as I put these forward of things that could be helpful, um, that we think could be helpful pieces of information to capture in a map, for you to answer what might be missing. Maybe there's a piece of uh, information about an organization that, that would be really helpful to you in the work you do or the way you're looking to understand our space. Um, I invite you to put that in chat. All right, enough, let's get to the map. So our prototype map was a two by two. We all love a good two by two. Um, and so we took those two foundational elements of health and design and thought, how could we show the field's um, distinction in both how we integrate health into our portfolios and also how we use the craft of design within the work we do. So we have this one element called centricity of health. Um, and that's really trying to say, like, in the work that this organization does, is the portfolio of projects exclusively health or is it a broader portfolio and health is a part of that broader portfolio of work? And for centricity of design, we're, we decided to look at this by how, what is the team makeup? So what are the kind of skills and expertise that you're bringing to your work? So is the team of the organization um, made up exclusively of designers? So very design-centered, strong design craft, or is it mostly non-designers, a more interdisciplinary team um, where designers are a part? And so to give you an idea of how we took three organizations, ourselves included, obviously, and said, okay, does this really work? Um, when we plot them by a two by two, does it make sense and is it useful? And so you can see that we have an example like IDEO where um, health and wellness, IDEO does do health and wellness work, but it's, it's part of a much larger portfolio. And the team at IDEO, most people would consider nearly exclusively designers. For the Design Institute of Health, we do a portfolio of projects that are all health or health adjacent, and our team is mostly designers. And then the Mayo Center for Innovation, their portfolio is certainly exclusively health, but they have a really interdisciplinary team with some designers with a lot of different um, disciplines as well. So I think it's important here to say that high or low is probably not the right words to use, but more trying to capture and pull across our distinction in the field and how we choose to leverage the craft of design and also how health factors into the work we do. So to refine our prototype further, a two by two is great. It's gonna be a, how, how can we refine it so that it can be something that's co-created where we can invite you to contribute to the map and it to, it to be something that can be living. Um, how can it be data driven so that when you um, submit data or when we acquire additional information that um, a map can be updated? And how can it be accessible, both easy to understand as well as something that we're not being gatekeepers of, but that um, can be accessed very easily? And so we decided to use Kumu. Um, if you're not familiar with Kumu, it's, um, it says it makes our messy, complicated world a little less so, a little more organized. Um, and so it's a, it's a web-based platform that I'll share with you. Um, we'll go to the platform in just a second. Um, and it's certainly been exciting to learn. Always uh, love learning a new way of seeing things in a new platform. So, and I think that another thing to point out about Kumu is that, um, as you'll see, that though it's a map and a visualization, um, it is also driven by a spreadsheet. And so therefore it does have a database element to it. And I think that's kind of interesting because in health, I feel like a lot of people in health kind of maybe 
find it more accessible to cruise a database or something that's more like a spreadsheet. And a lot of us designers maybe find a visualization much more easy to digest and engage with. Um, and so it's accessible in that way as well. And because it's data driven, it allows it to be somewhat automatically updated. Um, and that can enable the co-creation. Um, so this is our the two by two that, that we've created in Qumu. I populated it with not all the organizations because you're gonna help me do that. But we populated it with some organizations that my students and the masters of arts in design with a focus on design and health that they're interested in. And so um, you can see that we've made a legend of their sectors and tried to roughly map them within the um, two by two that I, I explained to you. And so we can see that the my three prototype examples we can find here in the map. And so let's go to Kumu. Here we go. Here it is. Um, so this is this is exactly what you would see if you went to Kumu. There's a description of my project and a little bit of a reminder about the two by two and what we're thinking. And the cool thing about Kumu, there's a lot of cool things, I'm not gonna lie, is we see here and we can zoom in on different aspects. And so you can see that um, we have some of our colleagues here um, and I just saw, and there's Hope Lab right here um, that we heard from. And so this allows us to kind of begin to parse out who are we as a discipline and what are the differences and how we bring design to our work and also how health integrates into part of our work. And so there's a few different, um, I think we're not, some other things that you can do with Kumo are we can filter. So which of these organizations are working in academia? Which are academic and consultancies? Um, which are health systems that are somehow in the design and health space, either through a, maybe a lab or a center? Um, and so these are some really great features, especially as we think of integrating some of those additional um, those additional layers of things like size, of things like, um, you know, this is sector, but locations. Um, I get really excited about it. And I hope you're getting excited about it too. And just to be clear, this is obviously still a work in project progress. This is Adam and I's kind of pet project to, um, because we're really passionate about design and health and we're passionate about mapping. Um, and so the other, there's a lot of cool features that we hope to integrate as we build um, Kumu out. There are some, you can uh, link the different, um, the different elements so that it can go to the websites um, and you can put a lot of information in for filtering and different, um, different decorating aspects, kind of coloring and different things like that. Um, so the other thing is we're not totally set on the two by two. This was kind of how we um, how we started and where we're where we're thinking about, um, but we would love to evolve that. And so, you know, some of the things are: is there some like is there a radial graphic that we could that might be helpful to represent? Is it just kind of a, a plot? Like what what's what's the um, underlying kind of geography of what we're of what we're mapping to? Because this map is not necessarily it's relating us to one another as organizations by relating us to the space, if that makes sense. So by relating us to the, the health and the design centricity aspects that I mentioned. So um, I need to move on. It's so exciting. I could obviously stay in Kumu for a while. I would love to hear from you in chat. Would you use this map? Is this a good idea? Should I continue to spend my time building it? Um, and if you would use it, what would you use it for? I would love to hear about what your organization would use it for, or what you would use it for, um, as we continue to build use cases and make something that could be really useful. So the most exciting part and the last part that I wanna bring to you today is an invitation to co-create with us. Because Kumu is data-based and data-driven, um, we've developed a Qualtrics survey. It's really simple. You can do it on your phone. And essentially, you do the survey for each organization you want to submit. Um, and you can see kind of how we're collecting that information. And you can also um, include your name and your email address to get updates on the map. 
Um, so we invite you, please co-create with us, submit organizations to our map. Remember, they need to be both in the design and in the health space. So they need to be doing at least some work in health or health adjacent, and they definitely need to be doing at least some level of design work and have some level of design craft and expertise in their team. So without further ado, that's what I will leave you with. This is myself and this is my colleague, Adam. Like I said, we're really excited about maps. We're really excited about design and health. We would love to hear from you and we definitely would love to integrate your organization into our map. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Natalie. That was um, just really interesting to see, you know, the way you're thinking about fitting all of these different organizations together and relating them. Um, one thing I'm curious to ask you is as you worked through this process of thinking about that whole landscape, were there things that um, you learned or realized about your own organization as you were doing this sort of expansive process of looking at everyone? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think it was um, it was so interesting to think about, okay, we of our like what's the difference between our organization and you know any other organization? And you know, to actually have to both um, articulate it and say, well, obviously there's a big difference. I mean, I work at the Design Institute for Health, so maybe it's obvious to me, but there's a big difference between like IDEO, maybe a well-known one, right? And us, what would you say those differences are? And then going beyond that, not only what are those differences, but how would you capture them in a way that that we could that we could map them? And since we're looking to co-create, that we could establish relatively shared definitions of those. Um, and so something that maybe leans more objective, although it's always subjective. And so I think for us, it was really thinking about what makes us health, what makes us more or less health, um, what makes us design. What makes us what makes us more to, you know, have um, like kind of what moves us on that um, on that spectrum. And um, but it was also so exciting to, you know, just all these connections that I think we all have and, and that we know of to like bring life to it in a map and then be able to share it with the next generation of change makers in the MA program has been um, is just really exciting. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Um, we have one more question sneaking in um, before we run out of time um, from Danielle. Um, so we would use it to think about how, sorry, I'm reading and... It wasn't a question. I was thought. just sharing oh. Oh, with you. Natalie how <laughs> you would find it as we think about how we want to make an impact in the next five, yep. seven years at Hope Lab. Absolutely. And I think um, seeing your, I think, you know, this and another comment, Danielle, of just thinking like, who, um, who should we be thinking of strategically partnering with, right, as we seek to grow as organizations and individuals, right? Um, Kat, thanks for that. Great. Well, that brings us to three o'clock and the end of this session for health literacy. Um, so thank you so much to all of our speakers today for joining us from across the U.S. and across the globe. Um, and thank you so much to everyone who participated in the audience.